Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I'm your host, Frank Egan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Today, I have another great guest. Uh, I have a networking expert on, somebody to rival me, or not rival me, supplement me. Um, but as our ongoing subscribers know, often on this podcast, I will be sharing ideas and insights and best practices for building professional relationships and helping us excel at business networking. Occasionally, however, I will be interviewing subject matter experts, authors, speakers, thought leaders, social scientists, um, and these people share their knowledge to help us build relationships. Uh, today, I have on with me Peter Biotish. Uh, he's the president of Total, Total Publishing and Media, um, and he has, he, he's just not an author. He has authored, co-authored 18 books, including More Leads, The Complete Handbook for Tips Groups, Leads Groups, and Networking Groups, Write Your First, first Book, which is now in its second edition, Increase Your Sales and Lower Your Golf Score. Uh, he's also a very active public speaker, writer of hundreds of articles uh, and a few, even a few short stories. Uh, his areas of expertise include uh, applied mathematics, th theoretical physics, oh boy, here we go, as well as degrees in psychology, uh, aiding him to build bridges between the often diverse worlds of social and natural sciences. Um, you can catch him on YouTube as well. He's got a bunch of uh, YouTube uh, or sh video shorts on YouTube and Facebook. Um Peter, welcome to the program. I mean, you're just not an author. You help other people get published, too. I need to throw that in there. That's um, correct. And that's a lot of author development work. Yeah, that's uh, that's part of it. So, um, uh, you know, be, before we uh, before we hit record, I was asking, OK, Peter, how do you say your last name? And uh, the cheating way he said is, don't be normal, be oddish. So that's right. be oddish. That's right. Um, I will never forget that. So I'm going to. Then it works. It, well, it does. It does. Um, I don't want to say it's you. I don't want to say you're odd. But uh, anyhow, uh, I've got a copy of one of your books out here. More leads, the complete handbook for tips groups, leads groups and, and networking groups, uh, which is uh, uh, certainly an interesting read for somebody who uh, creates these groups. And, you know, pretty much everything you have in here um, is this is a great handbook if somebody wants to do their book, do a group on their own. And there are people out there uh, who do, and that's fine. Um, you know, people do their own taxes. They sell their own houses. They can create their own networking groups. I'm not, uh, I'm okay with that. Um, but let's just, you know, I, I guess let's just talk about, I guess, quick backstory, you know, how you got to this place and certainly networking has, has played a role. You know, what are things that you're coaching authors on with respect to how to get themselves out there? Uh, I think a lot of people feel that writing a book is the end of it. And I tell people writing a book is about a third of it because you got to piece it all together and then you got to do all the things to get it sold. So anyhow, I'll shut up and kind of let you talk a little bit. Well, lots of, lots of great topics you bring up there. Yeah, the basis for that book, More Leads was my first book. I'm working on book 19 now. But what I found way back then was so many people <clears throat> were elected president of their networking group because either one, it was their time, or two, they missed the meeting and they elected them just for the fun of it. They didn't, didn't have a clue on how to be how to run a networking group. So I just made a simple handbook for those that did not that never, never studied networking. My degree is in psychology, which is interpersonal relationships. That's what networking is. So the, the book just basically gives form on how to lead a group if you've never led a group before. Uh, there's meeting formats in there. There's discussion questions. There's how to be a better networker and, and really definitions of a networker in there. Uh, once, uh, well, that, that book came from speeches and me teaching networking. The way I got into networking was I realized, thanks to a new job, that I've been networking all my life, but I did not know I was networking. So I was, therefore, I was doing it really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my customers invited me to this networking group, uh, joined the group, and they said two rules, show up on time, pass a lot of leads. 
So three months later, they said, you're passing the most leads. You're now the new president. At that point, I was, I could barely spell networking at that point, never mind become president. So during that week, between the meetings, I had to decide why would someone come to a Peter Biotish meeting? And because of my degree in psychology, that's when I started teaching five minute snippets at the end of every meeting on different, different parts about being a better networker, being a leader, maintaining a positive attitude, overcoming procrastination, a lot of stuff that's in the book. Um, education. I yeah. figured someone, someone would come to one of my meetings of education. Next thing I know, I'm working with a whole bunch of groups. A chamber calls me up and says, do you want to MC our events? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? So I started regularly teaching on business networking, um, even at the university level. Uh, eventually, the first book got written, ended up writing more books. When my 10th book was coming out, I was unhappy with the publisher I was with 15 years ago. So I ended up going to my network because I'm a networker. Right. Got the introduction to another publisher who basically said, you should own your own publishing company. Um, so through networking, get to that point. Um, through networking, got our first author. I teach all the authors how to network. Um, and you take care of one author, you take care of their whole tribe. So we've just grown everything by networking for, for quite a long, long time. Because most people are networkers. They just don't realize they are and what the process is to do that. What do you think are some of the biggest challenges that challenges that your authors run into in, in getting themselves networked? Or well, knowing how to organize their network. Um, most, not most, all total publishing and authors know what their number is. You know, and everyone knows at least 200 people is what studies show, but most of our networks are larger than that. Um, yeah. When I first meet an author or a prospective author, I'll ask them how big their network is. And the most common answer I get is, well, I've got 400 friends on Facebook. I'm like, that's not what I asked you. Right. So we take, we take them through, but I, I, I developed a three-step process thanks to one of my mentors years ago um, to organize your network. One, uh, write down the name of everyone you've known from high school to the present. I went back to elementary school on my first list. Two, alphabetize the list, which in Microsoft Word is click, click, boom, you're there. And then three, start contacting people because it's networking, not net playing. There's work involved. And when you contact people, it doesn't matter if you talk to them, you know, yesterday or 20 years ago. Networking calls, not sales calls. How are you doing? How are the significant people in your life doing? And at the very end of the conversation, just plant a seed. I have a new book coming out. I, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. If they want to know more, they'll ask. If they don't want to know more, end of conversation. You've planted a seed. And by going through that, one thing I learned real quickly is you, you already know everyone you need to know to become successful, but you don't know who they are in your network. You know, someone you grew up with way back when, their little brother or little sister who was a brat way back when may now own a company that could be vital to your company. You don't know. Right. Uh, when I did the exercise, I actually contacted someone who I grew up in Massachusetts with. Back then, his dad was the editor of the local newspaper, Small Town. And when we con recontacted years later, I just assumed his dad was probably retired. No, his dad was now the New England bureau chief all the, over the newspapers. He had found my book, Increase Your Sales and Lower Your Golf Score, loved the book, personally wrote a review and distributed it to all the newspapers throughout New England without charging me. They sent me a link after I contacted them and uh, saved me basically $15,000. But it, they did that because I'd reached out thanks to that exercise. You just never know when your network's going to leave. Yeah, no, it's yeah. I, uh, the story I the story I really enjoy is the story of Dr. Seuss. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but he wrote, uh, um, what book was it? It was his first book. Oh no, it was Mulberry street, you know, and he wrote that cute little book, um, and took it to 27 different publishers and got no, 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 it's too silly, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he was literally walking home to go burn the manuscript. That's, this is the story. Yeah. And came across a classmate. I think they went to Colgate together. Um, and his classmate had just been named um, bureau chief, or he was in charge of the the juvenile section for Random House. Uh, that was it. That was you know. <laughs> that would be yeah. you know um, chance meeting, and it just goes to show you. I mean, it's um, just, you know what our contacts can do for us. I mean, it's. Well, how did we meet through networking? Yeah. Michelle. So, yeah. 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 No, she's awesome. She's, she's prolific. I mean, it's, yeah, it's no, absolutely. And, and, uh, you know, it's somebody, somebody in, in the networking hub, which we go to the second Wednesday of every month where, where yes. we uh, uh, convene. Um, 
uh, somebody in there said to me, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. Meaning, you know, seed turns into trees, which turns into a lot more apples and more apples and you know, more seeds mm-hmm. and more apples. Um, and that's how, you know, that's how I start to look at networking is, okay, I've met you, but where is this going? This is, yeah. the, this is huge. Um, absolutely huge. Yeah, and kid, networkers are givers. And then that kind of goes back to the seed thing, that the seeds keep on reproducing. And networkers are givers. And that's why I'm so big on organizing your network, because if I'm talking to you or someone else, I say, hey, what else can I do to make your life easier? That's my standard question. A lot of times they'll start telling what they need in their personal professional life. And if my network is organized, then I can start giving them, okay, call so-and-so, here's your contact information. You know, I'll tell you, send you the phone number, make the introduction on email or Facebook or whatever we need to do here. But if my network's not organized, I can't give you those contacts. Yeah. And that's the very, very important part. No, I totally agree. Um, I, I, I totally agree. It's a, it's a great op. You know, you, there's a lot of time in connecting people, right? Uh, mm-hmm. That's why I really appreciate what Michelle does. Cause she takes the time to, you know, to do it right. And um, there's a lot of time in that. And there's, you've got to find, I don't want to say tricks or that just, that's a bad word, but I'm not a, not a bad word, but not really, uh, not really accurate, but you, um, you've got to find, you've got to find hacks. You've got to find ways of being quick about it. Um, yeah. Techniques. Yeah. Yeah. Techniques. I, um, yeah. Cause with, with introductions I'm giving and in, in going back and forth all the time, I'll be honest with you. I've got a Microsoft word document that has some, I learned, learned this from Tom Hopkins way back when, if you have a file of standardized verbiage that you can cut and paste and then modify. Yeah. The hard work is done. The heart is still there. You're still doing the work, but you want to make sure everyone gets the attention. And even though I write a lot of books and write articles and stuff, my typing speed is not really, really fast. Yeah. So I sometimes have to cut and paste. Just it's a time saver, time management. And in fact, I was talking with a networker about this a couple of weeks ago, and they were they were questioning their time management skills. They were doing a lot, but they were still falling behind. So I said, well, let's look at your processes and refine and define some of your processes and you'll get the same or better results and still have some time left over to do something else. Took 20 minutes. Yeah. Er, Earlier this year, uh, well, someone from the networking hub, Dan LaFave, he introduced me to uh, Phrase Express. Have you, are you familiar with Phrase Express? No, no. No, it's, uh, I mean, it's great. It's, uh, you can get a free version of it or you can buy it for 40 bucks. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to load all those commonly used phrases mm. into the app. And you can I haven't I haven't taken it to where Dan has taken it, but Dan can literally type two characters like pound star and this paragraph will come out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so it's I mean, it's, you know, when he showed me that it was like. um it was like cavemen seeing fire for the first time. It's like, <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, and with the paid version, I, I paid for it. With the paid version, it keeps track of how much you use it, you know. And, and so, it, you know, it says, you know, I think it factors like ten bucks an hour, which is, I, I hope I'm worth more than ten bucks an hour. Um, but at this point, I think you know it says you know saving six hundred thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all. Sixty hours is. That's that's a week and a half. Well, right. a week a week for entrepreneurs. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but still, it's you know it's you know it allows me to podcast quicker. It allows me to respond to people quicker. Um, it's always a challenge when you're meeting somebody new and trying to pull their little bio up. Um, yeah. or you have to come up. I mean, it's not nothing's totally automated, but it certainly helps helps a ton. Um, here's a question for you. I once and I'll get your reaction to this. Uh, I've written books, and someone once said to me that for every book you give away, you sell five. I, um, and I don't really quite know how to take that. Um, I don't know what your reaction is to that, or what you might tell your authors. I think I, I, I hear what you're saying. I think it's very situational. There are people in our lives that are champions. They talk about us behind our back in some really great ways. And next thing you know, you get your referrals left and right. If you, if you give a book to a champion, 
that's in your life, it might come back a hundredfold. Right. Um, so it's you have to be very strategic as far as how you do that. You know, there's certain people in the media. Um, they're, they're, yeah, there's a certain influencers that you know that giving them a free book, or an autograph book, is a very wise investment. Um, it, it's just, but again, it goes back to knowing your network. You know, you just don't give away just to give away. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. I, I, you know, I thought the statement, to be honest, was kind of self-serving because the more books I get bought from this person, the publisher, to give away, benefited them. You know, or just give them away. Just you got to trust this formula. It's like, ah, it can't be that simple. I've always been of the mind, Peter, that uh, somebody asked me, how do you sell your books? And I said, well, I give them away. And I say, well, hold on. What I mean by give them away is I do a little post here, a little post there. I give little snippets. And if somebody was enterprising enough, they could go on social media. They could print all my posts and they could organize them. They could have my book for free. Right. Yeah. But nobody's going to do that because time's worth something. But right. they'll, see, they'll see that. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should buy that book because that's how I end up buying books. Right. I'll read. You know, I'll read something, uh, whether it's on social media or might be in an airline magazine or whatever, um, or another book where somebody's referencing something and saying, oh, OK, yeah, I, I need to have that. Read that. Well, that's just good marketing. I mean, you're showing that there's value in the book. And, and someone recognizes, okay, there's that one value. I mean, we know there's more value in there than that, that one snippet. So let's go by the book. Okay. Um, what are, you know, what are some good book launch techniques? That That's a great question. That's a great question. In, in Before you get to that question in the process with my authors, at least, Again, organizing the network, making sure the network is organized is very, very, very important. Secondly, knowing who your target audience is. Because, I mean, you could talk all day, but if you're talking to the wrong people, it's irrelevant. So making sure the author understands who their target audience is and get to know the target audience so well that you know the demographics. I mean, down to if they drink coffee, what kind of coffee do they drink? Where do they buy it from? What store? What cafe? What, what kind of car do they drive? What kind of mileage do they have on their car? You know, you want to get to know your target audience as well as possible so that when you're doing your launch, it's going to that target audience. Right. Okay? Now, there's two types of launches. One is to the target audience. The other one is to the media who will contact the target audience. And so you want to have a two-pronged approach. But to know who the media is, you need to know the, who that target audience is to know what, what radio station they listen to. What are they watching on TV? What kind of movies do they go to? What magazines are they reading online or paper or the old fashioned way? Yeah. You know, what, what podcasts are they listening to? What blogs are they reading? So when you're doing the media side, you're, you're going to that part of the media that's going to go circle back around to the target audience. So homework is the first big step to summarize that of, of the book launch. So once the author understands all that, and there's a lot of information, in fact, my book, Write Your First Book, Chapter 8, the Chapter 8 bonus, talk about that specifically. Um, then the next step really is once, once an author gets the front cover design or the publisher too, the front cover design and sets the retail price, then we start pre-sales. Because the, the, the funnest part of, of selling books is, you know, getting that royalty check, starting to build it up before the book ever comes out. And using real numbers, okay? And then once the book finally gets out, you know, maybe you get some reviews beforehand, then you do the real big push uh, to the target audience into the media. Uh, for, for, you know, last year, in fact, almost every year, about 72% of all books bought are bought online. So as an, as an author, I know the money is, is on the online bookstores. The brick and mortar bookstores, it's good. It's kind of cool to see your book on a shelf. But if the book doesn't sell within the return time, their inventory requirement time, you get charged a return fee. Yeah. So pushing everything online, the Amazon.com is the word, Bunsenable.com, I means 122 major online bookstores around the world than the minor ones. So doing a good social media push, a good online push is a great place to start. Now, going back to something that's in the first chapter of more leads, let's, for simple math, okay, everyone knows at least 200 people. Those are studies have been done from the uh, wedding and funeral industry. If you say my 200 people, that's my free marketing department. I'm a part of their marketing department too, but that's my free marketing department. I'm going to teach those 200 how to tell their 200 about my book or product or service or whatever it is. 200 times 200, 4,000 people. Right. If those 4,000 teach their 200, you're at 80,000 people. 
multiplies really, really quick. And that's the power of networking. You know, if I go to a network meeting and say, okay, it's time to do your 30 second or 60 second commercial. I say, okay, Super Bowl last year, they paid what, four million, four and a half million for 60 seconds of air. Okay, knowing that if you're talking to, how many people were in the last networking hub? Uh, 31. Okay, so 31 times 200. So you get 6,000 people. No, one, two, three. You're right, yeah, six, 6, 6,200, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 6,000 people represented, okay? So what would happen if you got 6,000 leads in the next 90 days? You know what your closing ratio is. So that's why I talk about the power of networking because some people will try networking, say, that didn't work for me. Well, you don't try networking, you become a networker. It's who you are. And if you understand the math of the whole thing, it's very, very, very powerful. So that goes into the book launch. <laughs> Once the, once the author understands that this, this thing right here can, can get to 40,000 people, man, it, it's, it's amazing the motivation uh, of seeing people actually work their book, work their network to make sure there's an effective book launch. Interesting. Let's shift gears here. I want to talk about, I want to talk about total publishing, the things you do with your authors, um, and uh, I guess how people can get a hold of you, the person out there who's got a book that's still in the computer or got a book that's still in their head. Yeah. Um, you know, it's probably more, more so the types of things that you help people kind of get over the hump. Cause that's, again, writing the book is really only about a third of it. It's, you know, putting it all together and the marketing and the launch, you know, that's another two thirds of it. And, I, and maybe I don't have my percentages right, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but I think the mental block for most people is that first part. The learning curve on the first book is pretty steep. It took me five books as an author to kind of figure the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. So the earlier in the process someone can contact me, the more time and frustration I'm going to save them. Bottom line. There's a process that I teach to get to get from here into a Word document and then kind of get the path rolling from there. Um, as far as contacting me, it's real easy. You know, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, uh, totalpublishingandmedia.com. Uh, you can call me, text me. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty accessible. <laughs> Yeah. And that's well, my design. I'll get totalmedia.com in, in the show notes for sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, total, totalpublishingmedia.com. And really, when people go to the contact us page, I prefer they not use the contact us page. I prefer they just call. It's okay. a whole lot easier. And, it, and to me, it shows initiative. I don't like working with passive aggressive. If someone's really serious about I mean, it's amazing how many people are afraid to contact me because they go, a publisher, oh, my God. Because, but they're afraid of rejection. You know, I, I don't, I don't reject people. If the idea needs some work, we'll gladly work on that. But if you're showing the initiative to contact me, then we're going to have a great discussion. Okay. And I, I assume you have networks of people that can help with the layout and the cover design and yep. everything yeah, we have else. Editors, editors, illustrators, ghost writers, uh, cover designers, typesetters, the worldwide distribution, paperback, hardback, ebook. When we designed the company way back when, when my business manager asked me how I wanted the company to look, I said, from the time we have an idea for the entire process, we want to be this big buffet of products and services. So we're, so we're total for the writer. We're also total for readers because we publish every genre except pornography. So anything you need in, in, in the reading and writing industry, we have an answer for. Sounds good. Peter Biotish, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Frank. This has been fun. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.